here we are with a fresh and clean surface and the fresh from Capture One imported uh, raw image. And uh, this serves as a base for our retouching. And um, first things first, I would like to make some annotations and show you the roadmap of what is planned for this retouch. And um, to do so, I'm gonna create a new empty layer, call it Notes, take a brush that is red color, everything set to 100, and I can start pointing out what needs to be done. So um, we will work on the hairline to make it more nice, neat, and beautiful. So these tiny little hairs that are going somewhere and nowhere, they are going to be taken out. Same goes for the outer hairline. We are going to make it smoother, more nice, and uh, a little more beauty-ish. Same goes for those here, here, here. We're going to take out the holes of the ear. We are going to deal with those hair. Um, we are taking out a few of those. I think it's a little too much. We'll clean up the air, ear here. And um, we will, yes, we have to work on the nose. We will make it a little smaller. It's maybe not as much, but you know what I mean. Uh, it's just an annotation to make sure we didn't forget anything in the end. Um, we will work on the highlights, but that is uh, going to be pointed out a little later. We will clean up these little baby hairs here. Same goes for these. Like so. Like so. And um, we will work on the neck. Make it a little less thick, like so, to make it appear longer. And that's what we want for this beauty image. Oh, and uh, of course, we want to work on that line here. Bring it slightly up. And same goes for uh, the eyelid. We are going to move it up. It's it's it seems that it's hanging down a little bit, so we want to go for more symmetry uh, on both sides, and um, we are gonna work on a few of those hairs. We're gonna clean up a few of these spots, like these ones. Um, we're gonna even out the makeup of the lips, we're going to work on a few of those dark spots. And uh, let's take a green color again for the color, uh, the light work. So this spot needs to be taken down. Same goes for this one. This one, as we already marked up in uh, Capture One, we will make sure that we will hit the target here. And I guess from here, we are good to go. We're gonna leave that. And just to make sure in the end that we didn't forget anything. So first things first, um, pushing Command J uh, to double the uh, layer, call it liquify. And we're gonna start right away with liquefying filter, liquify. And I'm gonna show you what we are going to do with this. Um, so let's there's many ways uh, that lead to the desired results. So you can either use this um, forward warp tool, you can use the, use the push left tool, and I tend to use a mix of both. And um, I will start with uh, the push forward tool and just nudge the neck in. to make it a little longer. I'm gonna push this down. Don't worry if uh, there is uh, a side effects, we can deal with those later. Just, we're gonna make sure that the line is nice and straight, or let's say a nice shape. Uh, I don't mind a little roundness here. Actually, I like it. Same goes here. We're gonna push in the chin a bit since it's also slightly hanging there. Uh, 
Liquefying is always something that I want to double check with the photographer since it's his vision and uh, I can stand for few aesthetic uh, decisions of course but main alterations need uh, some agreement if you don't want to uh, start doing it again uh, it's better to talk about that up front just so that you have got double checked your vision on the image all right so that is the neck let's see yeah i guess we are on a good way here so now let's uh, take a look at the nose therefore i'm going to try the uh, push left tool was it push left yes push left tool what it does um, if, if you hold and push you can see if you go down you're going to push it to the right if you go down you push it to the left let's uh, go a step back and now let's do it in a very gentle way like so and we're going to move in the same direction here we don't want to tackle too much just a bit and let's check what we did i guess we are already safe um but back to the push tool we're going to shape the ear a little bit more round like round and uh, same goes for the eye let's zoom in a bit so that we have a little more control you can see that this part here is hanging down slightly um, what we can do and try is to use this freeze mask We need to activate show mask so that it has an effect. I don't want to move the eye, just the upper part. Yeah, let's make that chocolate a little bigger. And now we're going to push up the brow a bit so that it has the same flow as the left one always check that you didn't go too far yeah i guess we are good to go here we're going to push that up slightly too and same goes for this eye since it wasn't such a major move i thought uh, there's no need for a mask so we're gonna hide the mask again and see what we did yeah i guess we're fine here and final check I'm going to commit to that, pushing OK. And uh, next up is our retouching layer. We're going to um, lock it in. And uh, I'm going to work my way through the image, and you can follow along. Uh, so I'm going to deal with hair, uh, all, all sorts of um, inconsistencies, some uh, temporary uh, issues that are shown in the skin, some single hairs, work on the hairline and make everything nice, clean and neat. So let's go. We'll deal with all those hairs. Um, we're going to deal with some, some lines on the neck, but we start with a retouching um, the outer hair. Again, using a small brush, always, always, always does the job. Move to the clone stem tool and just work my way down
what I like to do is do many small strokes and take down the opacity so that you have more control over what you do. If you would just do one stroke, you have to go back in history the, the whole way. And uh, by doing many single strokes, you don't, you just have maybe one or two steps that need to be uh, taken away. Also work on that ear hair here already. And there is, uh, of course, uh, many, many, many ways that you can do that. And um, so you can work with clone stamp tool and you can put it uh, to normal mode. You can put it to dark and or lighten mode. It really depends on what you want to take out. But we are uh, now just working on a few things that I want to be out of the way so that those are not really uh, on our mind any longer. Outline first and outer parts like ear. Tiny molds, um, yeah, I tend to take them away, but again, personal preference or the brief of the photographer. So bear that in mind, whatever you do, make sure you are either fine with it yourself or you are allowed to do it. Temporary imperfections make images more natural and make them appear real. These, these that are going away can be taken away. Nobody is going to miss them. You always have the option to fast forward. That's the plus side. Watching uh, these videos, uh, if you take a look uh, or if you join my, my live streams, you can see uh, the whole process uh, in real time, as you can hear, of course, too, but you have the option to fast forward if you are not interested in the whole retouching. For me, it's part of the joyride and I love it to dive in to the image and just work my way. So you're welcome to join. So you come for the for the way, but you stay for the tiny little steps, right? I'm gonna take this out. And maybe that one, it's doesn't doesn't really add to the image. Same goes for these here. Okay, moving up. I'm moving between tools. So this is the spot healing brush, which is in many ways really effectful when retouching hair. 
and gives surprisingly good results by now. So uh, one has been working on the algorithm and uh, it's, it's a lovely tool to work on the hair. I think I'm going to take out these as well and prefer to put in some new hair, which is not as prominent. So how about, oops, how about this one? Yeah, it's very, uh, let's, let's move it away. Reduce the softness of the brush a bit. Take it away and we are going to put in new hair later. What we're doing now is working on a base. It doesn't have to be perfect yet, so remember that. You might think, what is he doing there? Well, just hold on. Bear with me. Taking out hair that doesn't add. See, there's a lot of hair going on. And we are making it nice and smooth. I like this one, looks pretty natural, but this one looks like a little spider sitting there, don't you think? Let's take the spider out. Who likes spiders in their hair, right? And maybe this one also here. We can try using the spot heating just to take out that one. See, it does a really good job. Take this one out. It became way smarter than it used to be. Oops, again, Apple Z is your friend. Uh, is your friend. <laughs> Apple Z is your friend. Sorry for mixing German and, and English. Okay, how do we feel about that? Let me leave it first. And I think we are going to take this way, put the opacity a little higher. If you hear me clicking, this is pushing out to sample new sources. It's always good to change the source for your cloning, not too much of the same source. Okay, so let's let's work on, go to the regular healing brush. Let's work on that upper part of the ear. Tiny brushes. Let me say that again, tiny brushes and patience. Patience is the key in retouching. Don't do things that you want to get done fast if you want really pristine and precise results. And believe me, uh, you are going to get so much faster in this. It's like on autopilot if you do it long enough. It's like driving a car. You don't really think too much about it. Once you master it, of course, uh, like 
it would be good to think about driving a car when you start out. There are these white spots every once in a while. I'm going to take these away. This one. This one going down. Also this one. Take the white one. Jumping back and forth through the image. Switching to the spot healing brush. Taking those, those hair away that goes sideways. Move it a bit here. Like this one that crosses the hair doesn't really benefit it and maybe just this one the, this thick one okay let's check before and after yes still 100% sure about these guys. Let's see a little later. So we're going to take out this one. This imperfection here. And those white guys. And hairy touching white is likely to be seen as gray and gray means experienced to put it in a nice way but we are selling to fresh freshness right so white needs to go you can either take them out you can colorize them so go with your feelings about it it just needs to be believable and shouldn't leave too obvious traces nobody knows which hair was retouched as long as you don't show obvious traces that you've been there. See all those white little dots? I don't want them. makes it appear a little dry the skin so two obvious parts need to go yeah, so goes this hair that's a little out of the shape of the brow doesn't add needs to go let's take also this one this guy this guy By working on an empty layer for cloning and healing, you can always bring back the original texture if it's what you think was better for the image or if someone asks you to. So working on a flattened layer makes this uh, a risk. You need to be 100% sure or uh, keen on retouching uh, things that are not necessary. So I encourage you, oh, well, this doesn't look too good. So we're gonna do that later. Let's take this one.
Okay, next one. White guys, white hair. Needs to leave. Of course, uh, if this would be a full hair image, not just the fringe of the image, um, you can think about working with a cloning in darken mode to take those away. But um, as I said earlier, and as I will probably say every time that uh, we are going to be retouching it together, there's uh, so many ways that lead to the desired result. You just need to have a repertoire of tools and um, take the ones that resonate the most with you and that give you your desired results. So just that someone says that this is better or you should do it this or that way. It depends on how you feel, how you want to reach your result. And uh, as long as you hit the quality, there should be no discussion about that. If you work in teams, like in studios or in, uh, in, a, in a surrounding where you share working files, uh, it is a good idea to think about it beforehand when collaborating so that you know um, what you possibly encounter when taking over a file from someone else. Been there, done that, you know, so uh, it's always good to talk about that. And then you might realize there is precisely very many ways to do it. And you have to commit to something, of course, non-destructible or non-destructive, sorry, and uh, something that can be repeated. Yeah, and of course, uh, you have to know when enough is enough. But these tiny little steps, taking out these white dots, for example, or these tiny white hair, will make such a difference in the end, so that the effort is definitely worth it. These lone strangers here need to be taken out, or this one that goes up goes in the different direction. This one here. Tiny, subtle moves for the win. See this? This is dry hair, uh, dry um, skin. You need to smooth this texture. You can clone it, you can heal it, whatever is in your preferred repertoire. Just make sure, tiny little steps, like this white hair here. We'll work on the eye soon. And we're gonna work on these tiny hairs soon. And again, many ways. You can start cloning in darken mode here. Let's let's go for it. I like this this tool very much. It 
then if you work with uh, pen pressure sensitivity on your Wacom board, you can be very subtle and work your way downwards. Just ever so slightly moving there. Take out what's shining out too much. We are almost halfway down there already. See? What I found out saves a lot of time is uh, create a few shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts, especially for toggling the visibility of the layer that you're working on. I made it to, uh, what did I do? Command. Command Shift Y, it's close to the keys that I need the most. And uh, I can just push it and toggle it on and off to see if I went too far or just to check how and where we are. So let's try to switch the tool. Put the, let's try it also with pressure sensitivity and darken mode. This gives us good result. There's many ways that we can work on that, uh, especially for light hair. Cloning in darken mode is, uh, is a nice way to just work on the brighter pixels. It does benefit us here. You can also um, lower the opacity so that you just dim down those hairs and don't take them out completely. If you prefer so. Of course, dodging and burning in this area will also help you to hide too obvious hair, but keep the texture. Um, just try what works the best, I guess. Oh, and um, music-wise, do you uh, did you make up your mind about? what you like and what you could suggest to me well for for my retouching i'd love to hear some thoughts on that so if you if you're up for it to share some just go to my instagram and send me a message if you like it's at jan wischermann and uh, I'm, I'm very happy to hear from you and get a message, receive a message with some suggestions, what you uh, are listening to, send me your Spotify playlists uh, or send me some thoughts, send me some feedback. I'm very curious about how and what kind of value you find in uh, my tutorials, what I can do better, what you are interested in. Just share some thoughts with me and let me know uh, if there's something that you would like me to show or talk about. It's always good to have some, some feedback. So don't be shy. Let me know what you think. See, there's uh, this. Let's zoom out a little and see where we come from. See, it gets smoother. The rest is going to be done in uh, dodging and burning. A 
going to work on a few of those. There's a lot of them. You don't really see them when you're next to that person, but camera details show everything. That is a mole, that is a pimple that we need to take away. Use that with a smaller brush, smaller healing brush, working on a larger area. And uh, I use the legacy algorithm. No, I don't. Sorry, sorry. I used to uh, when the tool was uh, updated uh, in a recent version, but it's uh, it's better now. So sorry, no, <laughs> no legacy mode anymore. I switched to the healing brush from the spot healing brush to have a little more control over the source. Very small brush tip for the win again. This takes too long for you. It's possible that you are not used to it yet. In beauty, every detail counts. There's no way to deliver a really, really awesome result and use shortcuts. You will, you will uh, eventually show some mistakes. Let's clean the mouth line first and then move on back to the chin area. This takes a while, I know, but once you are in flow mode, it's like alpha waves of the brain, just like in meditation. By the way, do you meditate? I love it. It's a daily, daily habit uh, by now, and it helps me to to structure my day to be present and to you know just don't let things come too close to me let me know if you meditate and how do you use guided meditations or like any app or like one 
particular teacher or something? Or don't you meditate? And why? Doesn't it, is it something that doesn't help you or doesn't give you peace of mind? I'm curious. All right, let's go back here then. This is the part that mm, I think we need a few rounds. You can also set the this tool to uh, darken, I think. See if it helps you. I think in this area, yes. Yeah, I just want to tone it down. I might also bring back a little of the structure with a layer mask later but that's optional i don't know yet just go step by step one step at a time When I started out in retouching and I wanted to learn and suck information in from every source that was available, and you need to know there was no YouTube back then. It was uh, hard to find some, some quality material. You needed to go to actually talk to people and sit next to them. And um, I, uh, well, let's go back to normal mode. I um, I always enjoyed watching full retouches, so start to finish. And uh, I bought a few DVDs back then. Some of you might know what the DVD is. Some of you maybe not. Ask your parents. And um, well, yes. Um, This way, I wanted to see if there was any like secret step, or or if there is anything that wasn't really told. And no, that wasn't. It was just you have to put the hours in, as my first mentor Robin always said. You have to put the hours in. There is no shortcut. And I was really grateful for seeing full retouches by other professionals and learn from them and that is actually why i'm doing this i i want to give something back to the creative community and to all my creative peers out here so if you have any kind of question that you think i can answer for you just let me know and i'm happy to give you my thoughts on that uh, as time allows These patchy areas we will deal later with in uh, our dodge and burn process. 
I am going to use the clone stamp tool now to uh, with a lower flow and opacity to dial back this hair here. Doesn't have to be like this one step thing. Build the effect and watch out for traces. So you need to be a little more, sorry, uh, you need to be a little more careful when working on these areas. I'm gonna take the uh, pressure sensitivity away so that I can work on this areas better. And I would like to reduce the hair here. Clone from the right direction and slowly work your way. Always keep in mind believable results, no obvious traces. And never mind if you overdo it, you can always go back, create a layer mask, um, go back in history, whatever it is that helps you or that suits you. You can always do that. And some things uh, need to be done in multiple steps. So there's no need to do, do it in one uh, stroke. See, it, nobody will notice that. Nobody knew that this hair was here anyway. Except the people involved in the in the process but it's always good to respect what they did like the photographer the stylist the makeup artists don't take things away that might have a reason just work on the temporary imperfections and things that are commonly agreed on that need need to be taken out like for example these holes in the ears from earrings and uh uh, pimples and all sorts of things that don't add to the image. See where we took the hair away? Yes. Lovely. Are you into sports like for yourself and, and watching and let's bring up some topics that we can discuss on uh, during the following classes and uh, so I like to um, watch soccer uh, here in Düsseldorf there is uh, as a club called Fortuna Düsseldorf um, very traditional club, not among the top, uh, top notch clubs in Germany, but certainly with a lot of drama and atmosphere. Uh, back in the days when we were able to go to watch the games in the stadium. And I've been working a lot with this club, right? We created the the autograph cards, the posters, all the images that were shown on the big screen in inside of the arena it was a lot of fun. And uh, by doing that, I, I found a passion in, in watching soccer again. When I was a kid, 
back in the 90s, I watched soccer with my dad. And uh, I'm curious. I took my son, who is about six years old now, to the stadium quite many times. And uh, well, the most important thing for him was like the waffles that you could eat. But uh, I think there will be a time when he also enjoys watching the matches and see the drama on the on the pitch. What is your favorite sport? Or do you like retouching sport photography? I do. do we have here? There's some patchiness going on. Can also be dealt with uh, in the dodge and burn phase, but uh, if it's bad texture, we can take it out. Uh, one thing I didn't mention yet, in the with the Wacom pen, I use the, the 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 smaller one. I don't really know what is it, what is called, but slim, yes, slim one. And I like to use these uh, nips here that are soft. So um, if you haven't tried that yet, um, it can benefit your workflow. I think it, it's very smooth. I think it needs to be trained a little, but once you get used to it, I don't want to miss it anymore. Let's work on a few lines here. Adjust the size of the tool, smaller. Just want to smooth out the skin here. There's one more hair, yeah, or two, three. Mm -hmm. You always start to see new things. Uh, again, uh, remember I, I told you um, it's always good when to, to know when to stop. But once I see things, I can't get my hands out of it, away from it. Okay, moving to the nose. There's also some hair. close-up beauties uh, it's good to take those away not to have them be visible too obvious those bigger pores we want to take them back and this hair here want to take it away this darker one is a bit 
flex spot right here. Here, this one clone stamp tool. Let's go to 100% opacity and move away here. And clone in the dark areas. Like so. Maybe a little softer now to make this transition more even. Yeah, better. These dark ones, we are going to take those out. Okay. Well, there's always uh, room for more healing and cloning. We will work on the obvious parts now and leave some steps for the dodging and burning. Let's see here. I think here is uh, an area where we need to soften the skin a bit with a lower opacity and um, maybe even lower. Just since it's blurry anyhow, uh, we can just soften it by cloning in good texture. See? Let's start here. You can also dodge and burn that, but I want to break some of the patterns. Tiny strokes for the win. Yes, better. Gonna leave those, take the uh, healing brush, work on these spots. Okay, oh, there's one more, like so. Now let's get to the eyes and to the makeup chocolate makeup who doesn't want chocolate makeup Okay, those white ones here, I think we are gonna say bye-bye. Not just those that, that, that go into the opposite direction of the flow. Yeah, 
possibly painting in a few darker ones later. Ah, sorry, darker mode. Just healing the veins in the eye and maybe some reflections here. Okay, let's go for the other eye. See how it gets silent when working on eyes. Okay, what do we got? This some of this hair here it doesn't really add as much to the image Okay, these light areas still bother me a bit. I'm going to take those out and I'm going to work on a few of those white spots that are in the brows here. I don't know what, what is that, like glue or powder? I think the makeup artist did a great job here with the chocolate. That's awesome. 
I would like to have chocolate in my face. In beauty, every detail counts. I can't stress that enough. So maybe we are going to take out this here. And that one. Since they are a little out of the f shape. the forehead there were a few things that I would like to take away just smoothing this area take out those obvious bumps more like a dirty burn thing mm, mind the lines yes okay and maybe um, maybe we go with uh, the clone stem tool with low opacity and fill in some of those areas but small light steps so that no traces see there's this bumps also we can dodge and burn those I just want to work on that base mm. all right yes 